friends, welcome to the Ransom Tart Podcast. John Eldridge here in the studio with Morgan Snyder on our team. Um, what we want to put in front of you, we've just been getting tons of requests over the last couple of months and over the last 10 years to talk about initiating boys. What does a process of initiation look like whereby a boy and a young man becomes a man? And I think all of you are going to find this absolutely fascinating because even if you are not raising sons, the things that we want to talk about have a lot of universal application. If you were with us back in the series that we did on the world, which is now the world series, (laughs) one of the points that we were trying to make was we live in a world now that does not respect, revere, honor, seek out process. We're a quick fix culture. You don't have to wait for anything anymore. And and I was talking about my personal irritation with blueberries and how, what do you mean I can't get blueberries every week of the year? You know, that's, I've just come to, to be so entitled that everything should be available and seasons don't matter and process doesn't matter. I just need what I need now. And You know, the internet certainly fed that. The world certainly feeds that. But human beings are not developed with um, without process. Human beings are not developed without intentionality. Character is not developed without process and intentionality. But more than character, something like substance. I think that's a word that you like a lot, Morgan. There's something about substance that's that's just not shaped in human souls through the quick and the easy. And and that's wow, is that particularly true when you enter the world of boys and adolescents and young men. And so welcome to a conversation that we're going to have over several episodes here that I think you'll find to be really fascinating. And Morgan and I were chatting and and you even said something about girls and raising girls, that there's a commonality to this? Well, it's interesting, John. You know, my son is my oldest of two. He's 14, and then my daughter is 11. And I've been living in this category of initiating boys for 14 years. And, uh, and the natural question that so quickly follows as I walk with men in this is what about girls? What Impor- about my daughter? Right. I yeah. mean, it's absolutely essential. And I think as as we teach on often, as we, we know that we're creating the image of God as men and women. And so there are distinct differences. We we are gender to the to the identity in our soul. And yet what is so intriguing as I walk this journey with my own kids and sit under elders, I see that there are a lot of commonalities of mm. of, to, of the human soul mm-hmm. and its formation mm-hmm. into maturity. And so, yeah. while it doesn't all layer on, there's much that is is shared and is very helpful. Yeah. Okay. So, just wanted to say that, gang, by way of introduction, that men, women, young, old, parents, grandparents, friends, you know, whatever your particular posture is coming in uh, as a listener, I think think this is actually going to have a ton for you as we focus now on initiating boys. And what does that look like? Um, Morgan's in the thick of it. I am in a very new stage of it. We raised three sons to young manhood, and you actually might get to hear from them later in this series. (laughs) But Sam, Blaine, and Luke are all in their 20s now, uh, late 20s. All are married Sam and Blaine have begun their own families, having their own children now. And, and, and so, we've got a lot of years of history in this and stories to tell that I think you'll find super interesting. As we get started, I think the first thing I wanted to say, we're going we're gonna to kind of just set up some ideas here in the first installment in the conversation. There's process and there's ceremony. And there's a lot of popularity in in kind of becoming a man ceremonies these days, um, people doing it around perhaps age 16 or, or graduation from high school, maybe even um, marriage, but a ceremony, an evening, an event where 
words are spoken, blessings are given, testimonies are shared, the community comes around a young man and, and bestows a dignity, bestows storytelling and affirmation right? Celebration. Mm-hmm. And those are phenomenal. And and we've all done it. Yep. And they're wonderful. But that does not initiate a boy into a man. A ceremony is a wonderful thing. It is a woefully insufficient thing in and of itself. It really was meant to be kind of like the exclamation point right. at the end of the sentence. It was meant to be the, the mile marker, mm-hmm. right? At the end of a process. Yes. And so much of what we're going to talk about, we really want to focus on process Mm -hmm. here and um, from boyhood into adolescent and young manhood, because the process is actually where the real stuff happens. And so just to name that, just Mm -hmm. to say there's process and there's ceremony and ceremonies are wonderful and we believe in them and we've done them and we'll talk about that, but ceremonies don't really get it done. Mm -hmm. And, And ceremonies can actually even be harmful, as you were saying. Yeah, you know, we hear a lot of stories from men and young men who have been um, the recipients of ceremonies. And, and John, you know, kind of some of the sad data is that a lot of ceremony has hurt young men. Mm-hmm. And when you just kind of get into the heart of it, the motive, so often it's a father operating out of some fear or some pressure. And he's, he's moving from the outside in rather than the inside out mm-hmm. and, and just not fully aware of what's happening in his son. Mm -hmm. But I think just Mm -hmm. to name as we're kind of kicking off in this introduction um, by way of hope is, you know, a lot of people are asking us about initiation of boys. And if we could just pause and wonder what's behind the ask, so often it's Mm -hmm. fear, Mm -hmm. right? So often it's, I have this boy and I don't want to screw up. I mean, that's the number one thing, right? And so I I just want to dispel the fear. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to say, this conversation will be deeply hopeful and will give some shape to the possibility of, of what's going on at the heart of taking a boy into manhood. Yes. And I think to say, it's God's passion. It's yes. God's heart. It's yes. God's intention to yes. mature his sons. And so when we see it as we are participating mm. with God, mm. it shifts from this pressure mm. to a possibility And so I just want to name the fear out of the gates and Mm -hmm. say, we're all in process. You're in process. I'm in process. We have not figured it out, but this is very hopeful. Yeah. And so what we meant about the ceremony can be harmful is that if it's not grounded in relationship, if it's not the fruit of a process, if it's just a Band-Aid that's trying to, oops, Mm -hmm. I may not have done things right. I'm going to have a ceremony for my son and and hopefully this will kind of get it done. Mm -hmm. If the boy knows that it's not, grounded in reality, if it's not grounded in relationship. Words of affirmation are wonderful, but words of affirmation are not helpful if the boy himself knows them not to be true, right? That he he still feels like he has a lot of questions yeah. inside him. So, they're wonderful, they're good, we'll come back to it, uh, we believe in it, but what we really want to talk about is process. I was reading a, a fascinating story, and I forgive me, I forget where but about the young elephants that were marauding a village in in Africa. It was right outside of a game preserve, and the older elephants had been poached for their tusks, and it only left a population of female elephants and young adolescent male elephants. Well, the young adolescent male elephants went wild. They were rampaging, right? As young adolescents will. Right in the absence of a male culture, a male supervision. And, and so they were like trampling crops and causing, you know, tens of thousands of dollars of, of damage in, in villages where tens of thousands of dollars, you know, it means an awful lot. And the fix was fascinating. Mm-hmm. The fix was they brought in a couple of older male elephants. They brought in bull elephants with the massive tusks and with the you know the body size and the, and it didn't take much like rather quickly it didn't take much the young punks started you know getting out of control and and literally the older male the bull elephants would simply stomp a foot they would stomp their big foot they would look at them you know they'd raise their ears and like that was enough young Young men do not become men 
simply by getting older. The passage of years does not turn a boy into a man. This is something that the world knew for ages upon ages upon ages upon eons. The world knew that the initiation of boys into men was the central and most critical task of culture because uninitiated young men and then uninitiated men, you know, boys walking around in men's bodies with with men's weapons and men's income and men's, you know, positions and titles do a lot of harm in the world. And, and what we have in the world today actually is mostly boys walking around in men's bodies. This the world knew. This the world understood. You must be very conscious and intentional about a a process whereby young boys in all their glory and their beauty and their wildness Mm -hmm. and their strength are shaped into the kind of men that we would call trustworthy, yes, good, strong, noble, kind, loving, right? Right. This the world knew. And it has been completely abandoned in the modern era. And, you know, we could point to a number of things to it. You can point to the Industrial Revolution, Mm -hmm. where for the first time, the father left the farm, Mm -hmm. the father left the home, the father left the shop, and the boy did not experience life with the father. Mm -hmm. The father's work and the father's world was largely separated from Mm -hmm. the boy and his world. And it's, you know, there's a lot of reason to point at that particular shift in culture, but the point being, we abandoned it. Mm -hmm. We abandoned the conscious, deliberate, communal intentionality of, Mm -hmm. no, 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 boys, you've got to initiate these wonderful young creatures into men. It doesn't just happen. Right. Or else something does happen in its place, right? Because one of the fundamental questions I believe of initiation is who and what is initiating the boys in your world? Because something is, but it's not an initiation necessarily into wholehearted masculinity, John, as you're describing, but there's self-initiation. You know, so many men in just the aloneness Mm. and the orphan spirit Mm. end up becoming adults, but they go through a process of self-initiation, which is deeply harming. Mm. And then there's peer-to-peer initiation where you often see in like a gang culture. And, And again, there's no bull elephant. Right? Exactly. So there's other forms of initiation um, that don't lead to a wholehearted man. Right. And that's what we're after. Yeah. Yeah. So let me just start with a couple of general questions. What are we after? Morgan, as you think about the process of initiation, what what's the goal? Why why? And and what are we after? John, I think that comment I made earlier. One of the things I've grown in appreciation in this process, because I lacked initiation in so many ways of of age-appropriate initiation, I'm making up for lost grounds. I just confess so much of what I'm bringing my son into was God initiating me and fathering me into wholehearted masculinity later than I wished. Mm. But in that process... What I've become aware of is God has an intention to grow sons into mature men that become kings, and even more kings into fathers, Mm -hmm. the kind of people that can answer the cry of creation that says, all is groaning, waiting for the sons of God to be revealed. In Mm. other words, the father's looking to entrust the care of his kingdom to people that can steward it. Mm-hmm. And again, that's not as much pressure. It'll, it'll be seen as pressure out of a brokenness, mm-hmm. but instead a possibility mm-hmm. to say, wow, the life that comes when the area in which you have say over is thriving, mm-hmm. the people, the mission. And so I think two words come to me, John. The questions that often are kind of a, a lens for me is modeling and access. That as I look at the boy, I think, how is it that I model a life in God's kingdom? Mm -hmm. And how is it that I increasingly provide a way over time to give this boy direct, interactive access 
to God's kingdom. Mm -hmm. And it begs so many other questions then. What is the Christianity I'm offering? What is the largest story of my own life? How have I handled my own initiation? Yes. Yeah, it's huge. You know, a couple of examples that we use when talking to men about masculinity, 9-11, the attack on the towers in New York, and the the firefighters that ran up the stairs— when everyone else was running down Mm -hmm. in panic, that quality of masculinity, Mm -hmm. there there is courage and bravery. There is strength. Mm -hmm. There is also wisdom Mm -hmm. and cunning. There is sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And then what you were just naming, there is a higher call. Mm -hmm. There is a bigger story that I'm living in. It's not enough to just teach a young man how to, you know, handle heavy equipment or, or how to make money in, in the stock market or, you know, how to be a marksman, even how to handle himself mm-hmm. in, in self-defense yes. uh, were he to be accosted, you know, in a situation. Why? What's the bigger story, mm. right? What's, what's the higher call? So, I just want to name things like bravery, strength, courage, mm-hmm. sacrifice, wisdom, cunning, in the context of a higher call. Yes. What we are after are great men. Mm -hmm. What we are after are good men, men of character, Mm -hmm. but not just nice men. Right. Not just churched men. Yes. But men that you know you can turn to in any situation to come through for you. Yes. Right? Yeah, the, you know, example of that, John, that just helps me orient to what are we after is, will this boy grow up to be the kind of man that can handle a woman's heart well, that can bring dignity to women? You know, that we had a couple alumni that were hosting a dinner with their families, and they were at a house where the, the wife there had been abused in her past years, and, and this is a family of disciples who've grown in the kingdom, mm-hmm. and they were out at a campfire. The men were, and the gals had put the kids to bed. And this woman commented to the other wife, she was looking out the window at these men, and she said, my heart rests in knowing that it is safe and secure because there are men like that in the world. Mm. It's like, that's, that's what I'm after. Mm-hmm. It's a piece. Mm-hmm. It's an indicator. Yeah, it is. It is. So that kind of shaping of courage and character uh, of bravery and sacrifice, of trueness, mm-hmm. trueness through and through, mm-hmm. that kind of shaping of you have been given a strength and the strength is for others. Yes. You have a higher call. You live in a larger story. That doesn't happen simply because you get your driver's license. That doesn't happen simply because you turn 18. Okay, now you're older, therefore you must have these attributes. Right. It, all you have to do is just look at the news and right. know that that's not true. Right. You know, simply because a man is 60 doesn't mean that he's wise. Right. Simply because a man is successful does not necessarily mean that he is good. Yes. Right. Okay. So, it's a process. And you have a, you have a very funny story I want you to tell about Joshua, your son. As you were beginning to think through some of these categories, you asked him one day, what, what was the question? What's necessary for survival? Oh, what? yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, we're right. I, I mean, these ideas were, they went from theory to reality, right? I have this young boy in my house that has this masculine heart. And we were driving in the truck one day. He was in his car seat. So, I mean, he was a young little guy. And I remember turning to him and I said, Joshua, what does a man need to survive? And it was beautiful because he actually thought about it for a moment. And he had to be four or five, maybe. And he said, I know, Dad. He needs a wallet and a cell phone. <laughs> okay, okay, pause. I mean, <laughs> would anyone have answered differently that's listening to this? Like, it makes so much sense. Oh, it was utterly brilliant. And it, it was beautiful and painful, right? Mm. It's beautiful because he observes whatever else is going on In my dad's world, he always is armed with a wallet and a cell phone. And those Mm. two things seem to make his world work, right? They make his world work. They fix his problems. And it was in that moment, John, where I said, okay, I must be 
intentional to provide my son a grid so that there's this shift yes. where he knows, yes, yes, indeed. In our culture, a wallet and a, and a cell phone, I would call them necessary evils. And yet there's so much more that my son will need. Yeah. Those aren't exactly the tools of masculinity. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So process, absolutely necessary. You know, you, you've all read the stories. You go into most prisons in the Western world right now, anywhere in the world, actually. And the primary occupants are young men and they're fatherless young men. They were not initiated. Yep. And the, the strength, the warrior... You know, the, the king, the leader has all been warped by the world, warped by a gang culture in most instances, but uninitiated and uninitiated masculinity does harm. Mm -hmm. So we're really committed to this and committed to a process of it. Let me, let me make a quick little plug. I wrote a book a number of years ago called The Way of the Wild mm -hmm. Heart. And it was, it was meant to be the follow-up to Wild at Heart. And in that book, I lay out the six stages of a man's journey from beloved son to cowboy, warrior, lover, king, sage. The sort of the stages of every man's life. And you can see it in Moses, and you can see it in David. You can see it in the life of Jesus. And in that book, I included a number of chapters and a good deal of content on, so how do you do this for young boys? Mm -hmm. How do you shape the beloved son? How do you shape the cowboy, the warrior? You know, And the book is out of print, but if you can get your hands on it, you'll access a lot of content. I'm sure there's mm -hmm. used copies out there and, and ways to, to get a hold of that. But I just want to put that plug in now because we're not going to be able to cover everything, mm -hmm. but... What I want to do, Morgan, is first off say, as we begin to dive in, boys and adolescence, mm -hmm. boyhood and adolescence, and then on into young mm -hmm. manhood, there is a difference mm -hmm. of what boys need and what adolescents need um, in terms of initiation. There's a difference between what adolescents need and young men mm -hmm. need in terms of initiation. Let's Let's talk about that a little bit, because I think think if we can begin to kind of tell some stories, give some examples of what what do we mean mm -hmm. by initiation? Mm -hmm. What does that look like over time? Yes. Uh, I think let's tell some stories and, and unpack the differences in those stages. Yeah, John, and I think one of the things that's helpful to me is to be mindful that an uninitiated man still has the boy in him. And so even if a person is listening to this and they don't have little boys, you go, well, that's okay. Mm. That's okay because just keep in mind, we're talking about the boy yeah. in the boy or the boy in the man. Yeah. And you cannot become a mature man mm. without tending to the boy. So these really apply to all men. Yeah. But I would ask you, John, if we had to kind of name the motive of what are we after in all that we do and in all the stories of, of maturing the boy and shepherding this initiation process, what is it that we're after? Well, I, I think the core things, especially when they're young, um, the core issues are love and validation. And, and actually, this is true to this very moment for every man. Mm. Um, the search for validation is the primary search of every man's life. And how it has been given or not, how deeply it has been believed and bestowed or not, is basically why he's acting the way he is. Mm -hmm. you know? And so, uh, a man um, needs validation. He seeks for it desperately. You look at the baptism of Jesus. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Love and validation, right? I'm, I adore you. Mm -hmm. You are beloved. You are delighted in. You are the apple of my eye, yes. right? I adore you, and you have what it takes. Um, you are the real deal. You are the real McCoy. You have a strength, a wisdom, a capability, a cunning, a courage um, to operate in this world mm -hmm. successfully. So those two things, yeah, right? that's good. Very different from boy to adolescent. I remember mm -hmm. Luke was, I think he was seven years old, and he came in one day Yeah into my home office where I was writing, and he says, Dad, can I have a chainsaw? <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, you 
you got to love that. You just absolutely have to love that uh, because that that desire to have an impact in the world, right? Um, you do not give a seven-year-old boy a chainsaw. Um, but I love his heart. Yes. I love, I love his heart in that. Um, now, for an adolescent, you know, some of the really great shaping experiences of young men are physical. Mm -hmm. They are. It's physical labor. It's physical experiences. Men learn physically. And so, oh yeah, you know, by the time my sons were 14, they were handling chainsaws Mm -hmm. and helping cut firewood and clear debris and, you know, make fire safe zones and that sort of thing. And that was a very important part of their initiation. There comes a time where I trust you with this tool. Yes. I trust you with this. The foundation for, for everything is affection. Mm. It's the foundation for everything. It is the father's affection for the son. And, and if not the father, then the uncle, the coach, the teacher, the company of mm-hmm. men. Because, you know, obviously many boys are growing up without a, a biological father, but there are men in their lives. Yes. And so we're saying the father figure. Yes. Um, it's affection. It's appropriate physical and emotional affection. Mm. It's it's hugging, it's wrestling, it's snuggling, it's bedtime stories. You have got to lay that foundation. Yes. And here's the reason why. Because men are mostly shaped by adversity. That's what shapes men. Mm. And it's a adversity of, of various types. And, and it's the role of the father initiating the boy to set up experiences of adversity where the boy learns critical lessons, not defeat, not crush, yes. not, I don't have what it takes. I'm not going to give a chainsaw to a seven-year-old. He's going to hurt himself and everything else, right? He needs to get that chainsaw at an age-appropriate moment where he realizes, hey, wow, I can handle this. Yes, I have what it takes. Okay, so various forms of challenge or adversity, yes. various forms of obstacles to overcome physical, emotional, spiritual. But if the foundation of affection mm-hmm. isn't there, that that adversity stuff is really wounding, yes. right? It, it's abandonment, it's betrayal, it's, you know, it's fearful, yes. right? Yeah, that affection, I'm just so aware, John, a couple of things with it is that it, it becomes a sort of fuel for him. It, it arms him with something to go out and in time and over time be tested. Yeah. And failure is a central part of the initiation of a man. Because we've learned when we describe what are we after, it, it's the kind of man who can live true apart from outcomes, right? And failure, as we know, is at the heart of Adam's separation from God. It's where most men get taken out. And so that affection, I think, becomes a sort of fuel, and it is deeply opposed Right? There's something of this bravado and caricature of masculinity that the enemy so easily causes us to withdraw. And I find it where I'm a pretty affectionate person, and still I have to tell myself, touch my son, mm. hold my son, move towards him, especially mm. as he's moving from boy to adolescent. It gets awkward. Yes. And I just, I have to go in the category. Yes. Affection <clears throat> is his foundation for the testing that's that's beginning to unfold. And so it's a simple act of saying, I will choose to increase my physicality in appropriate um, context w- with, yeah. with the boy. Yeah. So love and validation, beloved son, you have to know your father adores you. And early in the boyhood stage, it's the Legos, it's the story time, yeah. it's ice cream, and it, it, it is just deeply imbuing, mm-hmm. I delight in you. I love who you are. I love your uniqueness. I love hanging out with you. Love being in your presence. Let's just do stuff together. Yeah. And and that message alone, it doesn't it doesn't matter what the stuff is, trips to Home Depot, taking out the trash, and then yeah, the funner stuff, the fishing trips or the basketball, you know, camps or the other things, you know, the camping and stuff that you mm-hmm. would do. Yes, absolutely. But the primary thing is, I want to be with you. I like being around you. I love you. Yes. In that foundation of belovedness. It prepares the boy for the coming transition. And I think, let me name some other things for boyhood that I think are really important. I think adventure is really important for boys. I think it's really important for young men, and I think it's really important for men. But there's obviously 
appropriate stages of it. Do you remember the building the fort stage? Oh my goodness. Right? And he, and forts in the house. Right. Blankets and pillows and that kind of thing. For a four year old boy, that's big time adventure. Ugh. That's that is such fun stuff. Right? Exactly. We're not always talking about some again, it's so dangerous to make some caricature. Like it has to be this big unattainable. Right. It, it I John, what I hear you saying is like it's something that's available today. In the daily. Right? A stack of blankets and some pillows, but you're casting the imagination of, no, this is a this is a castle and you have to defend it against a dragon. Right. It's epic. Yes, exactly. So I think adventures are really important um, for the young boy and it's it's permission to to ride his bike to his buddy's house mm-hmm. and the and the growing the growing boundaries of adventure, yes. right? Yes, you can climb the tree. Yes, you can do a flip on the trampoline. Yes, we can build that fort together. Yep. Yes, more than no. Right. Permission more than restraint. Yeah, it's good. Uh, in fact, Jamie uh, on our staff told a beautiful story at a, at a recent captivating retreat of how she realized she was, every time her, her son, who's, I think he's nine, very adventurous, very all boy, 100% boy, every time he left the house, she would say, is it safe? Mm. What, what do you, you know, can I, can I, can I ride the skateboard? Is it safe? Can I do this jump on my bike at the bike park? Is it safe? And she realized she was really emasculating him through a constant mm. supervision of safety. Her message was no more than yes. Mm. Her message was fear more than confidence in him. And, and she tells a beautiful story of repenting of yes. that and allowing him uh, allowing him to get skinned up, yeah. right? You do fall on your bike. You you do crash on the skateboard. Right? You need you to. Know? You do need to. And and so, um, growing adventure. Um, I would also say stories mm. for boyhood uh, is a really wonderful beginning into the initiation journey. Stories of bravery. Yes. Stories of courage. Stories of the kind of young man and man you want him to become, right? And so, Teddy Roosevelt thought this was so important with his sons. He, w- he would constantly read stories and tell, uh, just narrate stories to his son of, you know, the brave deeds of valiant men down through history. And he ended up publishing a book. Um, and I, lo- I lost my copy, but if you can find this, it's it's Teddy Roosevelt to his sons. He published a book of true historical stories of just, Great men, mm. courage, bravery, sacrifice, yes. love on behalf of others, um, and the a boy's world is full of that stuff. Are you kidding me? All the superhero stuff, you know, the Narnia series, the fairy tales, the cowboy, mm. you know, stories. Stories are a big part of mm. boyhood culture. And John, with that, I think some of the stories that I observe are the most important stories for him are my stories of adventure, yes. my stories of initiation, my stories of brotherhood, not all of which are, are really clean and, and happily ever after, right? But it's inviting him into something. It casts a vision. I mean, I, I uh, was going to miss his football banquet to go on an adventure weekend with one of my friends. And I asked Joshua, I said, Joshua, like, uh, I'm, I'm I'm ambivalent on this. I want to go on this adventure, but we have your football banquet. And he said, Dad, you were at every one of my games. I want you to go. And I could see in him, he needs a dad that is living in the context of a story that he could see him being a part of. And so, so much of it turns into what is my adventure, right? What is my initiation? Oh my gosh, gang. Everything they were saying has this immediate flip to, and what is God doing in my life with that now? So important. In in my belovedness and in my training and in my initiation and my adventures, Carl Jung said that the greatest psychological impact of a parent on a child is the unlived life of the parent. Mm. And so it's that. It's that if you don't have any adventure stories to tell, how can you invite your boy into adventure? If you don't have any initiation stories to tell, how do you, right? And that's where, John, so much of the fear comes in the heart of a man, right? Because in his mind, he knows, oh shit, I have this boy, he's going to be a man, and the world's gone mad. Yes. How do I do this? Yes. And and, And we put the cart before the horse, right? So many men turn to ceremony or structure out of a reaction 
for this unmet need. Sure. And and yet the paradox of the kingdom is as we are initiated, yes. as we take the journey, yeah. we will offer the person we have become and are becoming. And yes. so it, it's hopeful because yes. we're just a step ahead and One that's okay. One step at a time. That's okay. One step at a time. Yeah. So a couple more things about boyhood. I've mentioned the baseline of, a, of affection, play, wrestling, you know, snuggle time, story time, trips with dad, and, and adventure and how important adventure is for a boy and catching pollywogs and, and, and caterpillars and, and, you know, basic stuff, right? Especially outdoors. I cannot emphasize how critical Outdoors is. A book that came out recently is entitled The Last Child in the Woods. And and this is a sociologist who's saying our children now suffer from nature deficit disorder, Mm. that most of the critical lessons of childhood are learned outside Mm. through play and through adventure. And 93% of your life now, world, listeners, gang, 93% of your life is spent indoors. It's a horrible statistic. It's absolutely soul killing. Mm. So it's the mud. You know, boys love to get dirty and they love to be outside and it's all that stuff. Tree forts. And I would add two more things. I would say appropriate testing, appropriate testing, right? So the the boy wants to know he has a strength and he and he wants to know his strength is sufficient for the need. And that's why he wants to test himself on dad mm-hmm. and wrestle with dad and stuff. Well, once in a while, gang, you let him win. Mm-hmm. You let him win. And I remember the day I was wrestling with all three boys and somebody drew blood. You got bloody. I remember that day too. <laughs> somebody, they hit me in the nose with yeah. their knee or something. And, you know, and there was this moment, there was, is dad going to get mad? And thank God I didn't. And then there was this second moment of jubilation among the little, the little Indian warriors, uh, the little braves in the house. Like, we can take the old guy. We can, you know, we're strong. We're powerful. Appropriate testing to set him up mostly, mostly in boyhood for victory, mm. right? The, the lessons of affliction are coming, but, you know, you, if you play ping pong with him, let him win mm. for heaven's sakes. If you're shooting hoops, lower the basket, get it off regulation, get it down. We had one of those adjustable ones and we'd put it way down low, you know, so they can make baskets, mm-hmm. right? You want to set up situations of appropriate testing. You go for the hike, you don't go for the nine mile hike, mm-hmm. Right, you go for the one mile hike, and you did it. You did it, Timmy. Way to go, buddy. That was a big deal. Yes. Okay. All that stuff, and then I would add the role of work. I remember, you know, my story is a very mixed story of initiation. My dad did a lot of things right when I was very young, but then alcohol got in and and really kind of blew up his story. And that would have been total disaster for me, except for the fact that my grandfather was a cattle rancher. And, and he would take me, I, w- I would stay summers at his cattle ranch, and he taught me so much about masculine initiation and boy to manhood and letting the boy be dangerous. Yes. Letting him take risks, right? It's not always a message of safety. But I remember one day he took me out into a field with a tractor and explained how he wanted the furrows cut in this field. It's just, mm. it's very simple work. It's back and forth and back and forth. You drive down, you turn around, you drive back, you drive down, you turn around, put the wheel in the rut of the, you know, uh, uh, that you just created to create the new one. Put the wheel in the rut, you drive back and forth. But then he drove off. Mm. And how old are you at the and, time? Oh, gosh, I think I was 12. Okay. 12, maybe 11. It's beautiful. I'm young. And he puts me in this field with this tractor. To do. Work is a very, very shaping thing. Yes. And so I would say, you know, boyhood, there's appropriate stages of, you know, raking the leaves and, and doing projects and stuff that, that require things of him. Now, this is killing me, but we have to stop because time time's getting out of hand and you can hear how passionate we are about this and the jillion stories we have to tell. So we're just going to pick up the conversation next time. You've been listening to the Ransom Heart Podcast with Morgan Snyder and John Eldridge. Hope you'll come back next time. 